Now that you have cropped all of your pictures, you're going to be able to start doing the actual edit to try to fix any color issues, exposure, contrast, any of that nitty gritty, or turn your pictures into black and white, into that grayscale, and some other presets. So we'll kind of take a look at all of those options. So one thing that is really, really important is that you have your computer monitor brightness up all the way. Uh, something I've noticed over the years is that students will have their screen really, really dim, so really dark. The problem with that is you won't be able to see if you're editing your pictures correctly. Um, so depending on, you know, if we have the lights on in the classroom or not, the computer sometimes automatically dim the screen. You want to make sure that your screen is at the very, very brightest. Um, so you'll see on your keyboard above the numbers um, on the left hand side, uh, there's these little icons above F1 and F2 that have like a little sun diagram. Um, and that, when you click that, will bring your brightness up or down. Right? So you want to make sure your brightness is all the way up so you see things the way they actually see them. Um, if your screen is too dark, then your edits will end up being too dark and then you'll get points taken off for not having good exposure and all of that for your edits. So just a heads up, keep an eye on that. Okay. So um, with editing, um, on the right hand side, so right above where we had our crop and rotate um, icon, above it we have edit. Okay, so when you click on that you'll see this um, menu pop up. Um, it has a lot of different options to it. We're really only be concentrating on a few of them. Um, some of them are a little bit more advanced, not something we need. Okay, so we'll start off with the first section which is light. Okay, so if you don't see exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows, whites, and blacks, um, chances are that the light menu is kind of closed off. Um, so you'll just click that little arrow and then it will pop up. So we'll kind of look at these one by one. And when you hover over the different um, options, it gives you a preview of what it does. So exposure controls the brightness of your photo. So move the little toggle to the left to make your photo darker, move it to the right to make it brighter. So pretty straightforward. Okay. So we'll look at the picture I have here of the sewer drain. When I move the little toggle to the right, you can see it gets really, really bright and blown out. I move it the other way, it gets super, super dark. Okay. Um, because you know, a lot of times we'll be shooting outdoors. Um, if it's a nice, bright, sunny day, we probably won't have a lot of issues with exposure. Um, but indoors, when we do our inside photo shoots with our studio setup, that's when you really might have to take a closer look at exposure. Um, so the one thing about exposure is it, it kind of works all of the things. So changes all of the highlights, all of the shadows kind of equally. So you can see the whole thing, everything just gets brighter, where everything just gets darker, okay? So that's how that kind of works. Um, there's other options. Um, so we'll look at highlights and shadows next um, that are a little bit more specific to just the lighter areas of your picture or the darker, okay? So highlights, we'll kind of hover over that so you can see what that little preview looks like. Um, so highlights controls the brightness of the lighter parts of your photo. So the areas that are the white, any of those lighter colors. Okay, so you can see in the little um, animation, when you toggle uh, to the right, only those lighter areas get brighter. If you toggle to the left, only the brighter areas get darker. So this gives you a little bit more control. So you can see when I move my highlights all the way to the right, 
the whole picture isn't getting really bright. It's just those lighter areas. If I move it the other way, only those light areas get darker. So definitely a difference between just full exposure. So I suggest personally to kind of start off with highlights okay, and shadows first, unless your whole picture overall is really, really dark or really light. Um, each picture is going to be a little bit different. So there's no specific formula. You kind of have to look at it and see what will look best for what you got. Um, so I can tell you, you know, your highlight should be set to plus 20 all the time. It really depends. Okay. Um, next we'll look at shadows. Okay, so shadows, when we hover over it, when we hover over it, ah, there we go. All right. Um, so the shadows controls the brightness of the darker parts of your photo. So the areas that are black and really, really dark. Okay, so once again, you can see in the little animation, when you move it to the right, it brightens up those dark areas. When you move it to the left, it deepens shadows, makes them darker. So in my example, um, so looking at my picture, I'm going to assume that you know what's underneath the grate that's kind of the darkest part of my picture okay i'm not really seeing exactly what's under there but if i move my shadows over to brighten them up you can see that that area starts to brighten and you can see that there's you know dead leaves pine cones stuff like that okay so that's kind of what you're looking for so with the shadows it kind of can help bring out details in those darker areas with the highlights okay, it can bring out some details in those lighter areas as well um, so I kind of go back and forth so I tweaked you know my highlights a little bit just to see if I can maybe bring out some brighter parts in that area that was too dark before now that I brighten it up and kind of go back and forth tweak it little by little. And the goal is to make your picture, you know, have a nice range. You don't want it to be just all really dark and all really bright. You want to be able to see all those details. Right. So I'm pretty content, pretty happy with how that looks. I was able to bring out more details in my shadows, my darker areas, a little more details and kind of brightened up some of my highlights to give it a little bit more pop and pizzazz. Okay. Uh, so next we're going to look at contrast. Okay, so contrast is kind of the difference between the light and dark colors. So this is something that you're going to hear about a lot um, later when we do darkroom um, because contrast is going to be key with that. Um, but contrast is kind of that separation between light and dark. Um, if you have less contrast, things start to flatten out more. If you have more contrast, it becomes more dramatic. So you can see in the little animation, move to the left, things get a little bit flatter, move to the right, things start to pop out a little bit more. Okay. So in my image, you can see if I go to the way extreme, I, it definitely changes what my shadows look like and what my highlights look like. If I go in the opposite realm, it changes that as well. It doesn't have as much pop to it. Okay, things start to look a little flat, not as three-dimensional. Um, so with contrast, yeah, you want to try to find a nice kind of medium ground. Um, so you might have to tweak it a little bit just to get more of that pop, um, or you might already have good contrast. Um, so for this image, you know, I have it at plus seven, so it's not that much more, just a little bit of oomph to it. Uh, next, we're going to look at whites and blacks. Okay, so with our whites, let's hover over. Maybe, maybe. There we go. 
Um, so this really works with kind of that true white um, in your pictures. So if you have an area that should be pure, pure white, you can make it look more completely white. Um, the black does the same thing, but with black makes the black more black, black, the truer black. Um, these you might not necessarily have to work with, um, but if you see that you have areas that maybe are a little too bright um, in the white realm, so you can see on the grate, there's like this white texture on it. If I start to move my white over, it darkens it up a little bit and you start to see some more details of that texture. Okay. If I go in the opposite realm, well, that just makes it look bad. <laughs> so once again, you know, each picture is going to be a little bit different. So use your best judgment. I think for this one, I like having the white not as pure white. Um, so I'm going to shimmy that over into that darker realm. Um, for the black, lighten or darken. So if I darken it, I lose all that detail of the stuff underneath the grate. So I might, you know, pop it up just a little bit like that, just to get some more detail out. Okay. So how do you know if the edits you made look better than what your original was. Um, so next to light, you'll see that there's this little eye icon. When you click that and hold it down, you'll see kind of your before. When you let go, you'll see your after. Okay, so you hold to hide your edits. You let go to show it. So you kind of see your before and your after. Before, after. Okay. So I'm going to go in, I'll tweak things maybe a little bit more. Maybe my highlights now are a little too much. So with this, you know, you, you'll go back and forth between the different options under light. Okay, don't think if you do one, you're done with it. When you change one thing, chances are you might have to tweak it again later if you change something else. So that's our light. Okay. Um, underneath all of these, we have something called point curve. Um, so this is, this shows like a histogram with curves that gives you control over the tonal range and contrast in your photo. If you wanna play around with it, go for it. Um, it, yeah, it can do some weird stuff. Um, yeah, I'm not a fan of it, um, mainly because I am not 100% sure how to really <laughs> mess with it and change it. Um, but if you want to play with it, go for it. If you want to look up YouTube videos of what the point curve does and how to kind of fine tune it, you can. Um, but it works with your grayscale, your reds, your greens, your blues. Um, so yes, yeah, so you can play around with that um, if you want to. Um, but personally, I would just ignore it. I would just ignore it. Okay. Um, if you do happen to mess around with it, um, there is the undo. Um, so in the upper right hand corner where you have kind of your main menu um, under edit you'll have undo so then you'll be able to kind of backtrack um, but also yeah so that's going to be kind of your your undo for that next we have color okay so color once again if you don't see the menu You'll just click the little arrow and then it'll pop up. Um, you can have some options here as well. So white balance, um, you know, I would have it set as shot. You can do auto and then it'll kind of automatically try to fix stuff. 
Um, but if you keep it as shot, it'll let you do the actual edits yourself. Um, if you're taking pictures outside and it's a nice sunny day, um, chances are you won't have to do much because the colors will be pretty much true to life because sunlight is like our purest light. Um, but if you're taking pictures, let's say at dawn or dusk when the sun gives off like more of those orangey and pink colors and purples, um, then you might have to do some tweaking. Um, when you take pictures indoors, um, this might be more of an issue for you where you'll definitely have to work with um, the different temperatures, tints, and all of that. Um, different light bulbs have different frequencies of light. Um, so you may notice, you know, some lights in your homes might have a warmer tone to them. They're more of that yellowish orange glow where others are cooler, where they have more of that bluer tone to them. Um, so that's kind of where this comes in. Um, for our studio shoots, uh, when we're using the flashlights and our studio lights, that typically is more of a pure white light. It's not warm or cool, so you might not have to change that up as much. But if you're just shooting, you know, at home, taking pictures, um, just know this is an option. So um, we'll start off by looking at temperature. So this determines how warm or cool the colors appear in your photo. So if you move the little cursor to the left, um, it's going to add more yellow. If you move the cursor to the right, it's going to add more blue. Okay, so that's that warm versus cool. Okay, so in mine, I show you, I move it to the left. It's almost like we're in a pumpkin. Move it to the right, and we are, you know, at the North Pole. Okay, so you can kind of tweak this as you want, but like I said, those pictures that are shot indoor or outdoors um, probably won't need a lot of tweaking. Okay. Um, next, we'll look at tint. Um, so that determines how green or purple your colors appear. Um, so that's kind of working in that other realm of um, colors. So purple, move it to the right. More green, move it to the left. Okay. When you're editing, I do not want to see pictures that look like this because you think they look cool. Okay. Because it just looks bad. Um, you really want your pictures to look true to life. Um, if you want to work with crazy colors, um, we will be learning about um, color gels. So that's where you'll have an opportunity to add kind of those crazy colors to your stuff. Um, but, you know, the outside pictures should like look like they're shot well, outside. Um, vibrance. Um, so this kind of changes the saturation without causing unpleasant color casts. So saturation is how intense your colors are. So if you have a lot of saturation, there's going to be a lot more color vibrancy. More, it's more in your face. Um, the colors will pop more. Uh, if you move it to the left to decrease your vibrance, it's going to tone down the colors. So you can see um, it kind of almost goes into grayscale when you move over to the left. Um, kind of gives you almost like those old timey photos where there's like hand coloring or there's a little bit of color in it. Okay, but it's not truly black and white. So you can see I bumped down my vibrance all the way, but I can still see some greens in the grass. Okay, if I move my vibrance all the way over, it just totally intensifies all the colors. It makes it look really bad if you go to the extreme. Okay, this looks really fake. It looks like it was like splattered with like some radioactive acid stuff. Okay. Um, but you can kind of play around with this. If you want more of a subdued look that's purposeful, 
Now you can bump down the vibrance a little bit. Okay? Or if you want to just a little more pop, you can do that as well. Okay, so this is kind of where your artistic eye comes in. Then next we got saturation. So this controls the saturation of all the colors equally. Okay. Um, so this is one way you can make your photos grayscale. Um, so if you move the slider all the way to the left, it's just going to take all the color out and just make it black, white, and all the grays. Um, if you move it to the right, it's just going to boost all the colors all at once. Um, so we'll go to the right first. And once again, you have that kind of radioactive look, which is eh, not, not so great. Move it to the left, you start to lose the color, but it kind of loses it all at once. Okay. Um, so if you want to do um, grayscale, where you if you choose to turn your picture into black and white, this is kind of one way to do it, is where you just bump down your saturation. But if you do it this way, you will have to go back into your light. Okay, and probably tweak some of these settings again. So just a heads up on that. Okay, um, there are some options of other ways you can work with um, the black and white if you want it that way. Okay, so if you want to go grayscale, you can bump your saturation all the way down, but then I highly, highly suggest going back into light up here okay, and tweaking your stuff again. Okay. So that's kind of the gist with that. Um, we have color mixer. Um, once again, kind of ignore that. Color grading, ignore that. It's similar to the point curve. If you want to play around with it, by all means, go for it, but they're really not necessary. Um, beyond that, we have effects, um, which gives you some options. You can play with these as well. Once again, you can hover over, see what it does, okay, and kind of try stuff. Um, same with details. Um, yes, there's a thing called sharpening. But if your picture is really blurry or just blurry, sharpening isn't going to magically make it in focus. It's not. It's never going to happen. Um, so make sure that you're picking pictures that are good, nice, and sharp. Okay. Um, optics and geometry. Also, you can hover over, see what it does, um, or just try it out and... Yeah, it does weird stuff. Um, once again, not really stuff that we're using in this class. Okay, so you can kind of just ignore all of those. Okay, so it's really light and color that we are working with. Okay, um, so up top, um, under edit, there is an area where you can click black and white, which will kind of automatically convert your picture to black and white. Um, so if you look um, it under color, okay, you don't have that saturation option anymore. Um, so you'd really be mainly working with just your light. Um, so you can kind of Play around with that. So if you know that you automatically want a picture to be converted to black and white, um, you can just hit black and white. Um, if you want color, you can do that as well. Um, under profile, this is another area. So color monochrome, a monochrome one color, so black and all of its ranges, and color is your color. Okay. So definitely kind of play around with it, see what happens, see what you like. Okay. Um, I'm going to go into a different photo. Um, so this one, you know, my dark areas, okay, so these
plants really, really dark. So I would just automatically go into shadows. And you can see by bumping that up, okay, the sky and the clouds pretty much stayed the same, but I was able to get that brightness out of areas that were a little too dark. Um, so this is why I mentioned, you know, even if you think a picture might be too dark or too light, try it because there's ways to kind of play with it, tweak it, and alter it. Okay. So those are kind of the basic edits. Um, I will show you kind of one more thing. Uh, we'll go with, we'll do this picture because I like this one. All right, so in the right hand menu, there is something called presets. So this gives you a whole string of filters, so to speak, to work with. Okay. Um, use these lightly. Um, think of these as Instagram filters. Um, I know on Instagram, when people post pictures, they're not necessarily filtering them with kind of the basic ones anymore. Usually it's like crazy filters to like, you know, smooth skin and make things look smaller, taller, whatever. Um, but yeah, um, so I have a lot of filters. Um, those are all mine um, that I've purchased over time, um, you will have a smaller amount. Um, if you go under recommended, um, you have options of like subtle, strong, black and white, cool, dark, warm, bright, cinematic, HDR. Um, so these kind of will pop up whatever filters or presets, right? in Lightroom they call them presets, that are on your computer. Um, so for black and white, um, this could be a nice option for you. So what presets do is it will automatically kind of change what all your light and color stuff look like. Okay, so if you look on the right hand side, okay, as I click on different ones, okay, the pre the settings change. Even if you hover, you can see when I hover, it changes all that stuff. Um, but this is kind of nice, you know, because if there's a specific look you're going for with black and white, um, you can kind of do this and it gives you some other options. And then from there as needed, you can go and you can you know, tweak and change things to make it more your own. Okay. Um, just be, be very cautious. A lot of times I'll have students that, that will go crazy with the presets and they'll be like, ah, oh, this looks cool. No, this just looks really overblown and fake and just bad. Um, so just be cautious. Don't think this is like an easy weak or easy way to, you know, get things done faster because it's not because, you know, a lot of these will look not so great um, depending on your picture. But if you're kind of stuck, um, you can kind of look and use it as a bouncing off point. Okay. Um, and once again, you know, you have that little eyeball so you can see the before and after. Okay, so if we click on this one, before, after, before, after. Okay, so that's kind of like a backup, backup plan, but you can take a look at them. I personally would just um, use it for black and white stuff, um, just because there's some really nice options in here um, that you might have. So, um, that's our editing.